Game Mate. In the 1990s, after the success of the Game Boy, the handheld video game craze was in full effect. Some systems like the Game Gear were very successful in this vein. However, others, such as the Gamecom and what this entry will be about, the Game Mate, fell into obscurity. While the original manufacturer was Bitcorp, they eventually went bankrupt and sold the rights to United Microelectronics Corporation, abbreviated as UMC. At this point, support for the Game Mate was cut off for the most part outside of China. A good portion of the games for this system have been preserved, but some are still lost, however, and a sizable portion of the games lost are not even confirmed to actually exist. Complicating this even more is that the grey cartridges are different from the black ones, as they contain additional content. Pop-Tarts Crazy Good World Sometime after Pop-Tarts launched their new branding with the slogan Crazy Good, their website's branding changed with it. This new branding added Flash games to the website that the user could play. The game section of the website went back and forth through a series of different names such as Gamerama and Fun and Games, but that's relatively unimportant compared to the games themselves. Only one of the 13 games from the website has survived, and even it was lost for some time. After the website rebranded once again in 2010, the games went with it. The other 12 are still lost to this day. While the web pages for those games are still reachable through the Wayback Machine, the games themselves have no way of being played. This is Jay. He's six years old. He likes books and football. He also happens to be one of the smartest people in America. On January 13th, this amazing child prodigy will out-answer PhDs and Ivy League professors. This is a tough question. I can name every single one right now. And win his family life-changing money. So very smart adults are about to feel really stupid. It'd be difficult to answer this question. Oh, come on. Our Little Genius premieres Wednesday, January 13th on Fox. Our Little Genius. In 2010, Fox was set to air a new game show called Our Little Genius. The premise was that a child contestant would answer 10 questions, increasing in difficulty and money value. The child was also given two lifelines which would allow either the child's parents or a panel of experts to help them answer the question. Just like on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, the contestant could stop the game at any point and keep the money they've already earned. Though with this show, it was the parents' choice to do so, not the child's. The show never aired due to allegations of cheating. Allegedly, a person involved in production gave one of the kids answers to four questions. Because of this, the show was pulled a week before it was supposed to premiere, and the show was lost in its entirety apart from a promo. The FCC launched an investigation into the show in 2010, but the findings are unknown. Pokemon PC Master In 2006, an educational PC game was released called Pokemon PC Master. Developed by Umbrella and published by the Pokemon Company, the game taught basic internet skills such as typing and browsing the internet. At one point, the game had a website, which no longer exists, though it is still viewable through the Wayback Machine. The game's disc has been found, and even ISOs of the disc are floating around on the internet. But because the game required a subscription service to be played, and because that subscription service is no longer supported, the game itself is lost. Hey, I'm Noah. You may not know me, but you will, because I'm going places. See, I've got a plan. Hey, Noah! Way to go on winning class president! You deserve it, man. Thanks, Joey. See, I got smarts, and that's what wins in the end. Trust me, I got this one in the bag. Total Drama Exclusive Clips Total Drama episodes each have their own ending clip called an exclusive clip, or a bonus clip. These were usually short skits that went with the accompanying episodes. These clips are mostly accounted for, but a handful of them are lost. Throughout Total Drama's run, most of them have been preserved in some way. However, two from the original season are lost. One of them was about Izzy telling a scary story that ends up making Heather vomit, and the other was an ad for the Chef's Roadkill Cafe. The other four lost clips are technically found in video form, as they're camera recordings of the Polish and Italian dubs respectively. The English versions of those four clips are still lost, however. In total, there are six lost clips spread across three seasons of the show.
Karma Studios. Karma Studios was a Dutch video game development company founded in 1998. They had many financial issues which made it tough for them to get off the ground. Their specialty was portable games, specifically Game Boy Color games. Only one of their games ever got a release. Eight games were produced to completion but never released due to the financial issues the company was having, and three games were still in the concept stage allegedly, and how far in the production cycle those games got is unknown to this day. Of the 11 unreleased games, the ROM to one of them has been found. The other 10 are lost completely. Johnny Test The Lost Web Series In 2019, Wildbrain released a teaser announcing a return of Johnny Test to air on YouTube that following year. As well as this, promotional videos were uploaded to that channel in the coming months to build hype. The first short was uploaded in May of 2020, and shortly after this it was privated, with none of the rest of the shorts being released. In total there were 15, and thanks to IMDB, people were able to find the titles of the missing episodes. To this day, aside from the first episode, one other episode, and part of another are the only things that have been recovered from the series. It's unknown why none of the other episodes got an official release, and why all the other videos were privated. It should be noted that none of the voice talent from the original Johnny Test returned to be in these new shorts. Perhaps legal issues complicated any kind of release. Either way, it's highly unlikely that any of the unreleased shorts will ever get a proper official release. Equals 3 In this search, quite a lot of ground has been covered since I last talked about this in episode 1. Since we last covered Equals 3, new episodes have become lost and found, and even some episodes have become found a second time. In July of 2021, there were five lost episodes. Today there are five, but that's only because two episodes have become newly lost, compensating for the two episodes that have since been found in the last 13 months. The episodes Your Perverted Dad and Super Mullet have been found, and the episodes Dog vs. Lion and Friday the 13th have become lost in that time. Interestingly, Friday the 13th was the final episode of the show aired in 2016, and it's unknown how and why those episodes have vanished. The volatility of this search makes it imperative for people to keep searching for leads, as it's very likely new episodes could become lost again at any point. So welcome to a special Saturday edition of Why Would You Put That on the Internet. This is Why Would You Put That on the Internet 63 Take 2. There are a few errors in the original one last night that I just figured, hey, I might as well just reshoot the whole thing. Why Would You Put That on the Internet, Episode 63 Original Version. Rob Dyke, who later changed his name to Rob Gavigan, used to put out a series called Why Would You Put That on the Internet, which was essentially a series of user-submitted content where Rob would make fun of the stupid things people put on the internet. The 63rd episode of the series was uploaded and shortly taken down and reshot after one of the featured submissions was a fake article that the author never really wrote. Rob took down the original version to keep the author from getting harassed about something she didn't write. Apparently the other submissions used in the video never got recycled in the reshot version, meaning the original version of episode 63 was made of entirely new content not seen in the original version. Because of the reason the original episode was taken down, it's unlikely to see the light of day. Batgirl. After the recent Warner Brothers Discovery merger, some projects were cancelled. None of them were as shocking or as important as the Batgirl movie, however. The movie finished being taped in March of 2022, and was cancelled during post-production. This essentially means that the new Batgirl movie was nearly finished and will go down as one of the most expensive film cancellations in history. Warner Brothers leadership reportedly didn't like the direction the movie was going, and due to streaming releases of films being more and more frowned upon, and with Marvel movies bringing in more and more money, the Bad Girl movie reportedly didn't compete in that regard. Combine that with the fact that test screening results were less than positive, and this ends up being a movie that will never see the light of day, making this one of the most transparent and visible examples of intentional lost media of all time. <laughs> 